situated just outside of Melbourne, Australia. Phillip Island Grand Prix Circuit is a fantastic and historied racing venue and we're going to add to that today because it plays host to the season finale of 60 plus racing adventures. We've got two races in front of us today in this Pro Mazda car, fantastic racing vehicle, open wheels and I'm David Haynes joining me and also producing is going to be Paul Smith and qualifying is underway right now, Paul. It certainly is, and uh, some very quick and close times uh, coming up on our timing screen. We will bring you up the uh, conditions here. Uh, 20 degrees air temperature, that's 69 degrees Fahrenheit uh, for those of you using old money. That's 24 degrees track temperature or 76 Fahrenheit. Partly cloudy, the winds, there's practically no wind here. This 2.7 mile circuit, absolutely fantastic. It's all about the slipstream here. But that's not the only thing we're on about here, of course, uh, David, because we've got a championship to look at as well. Yep, exactly right. 12 rounds to this season, and this is round 12. So on the left there, you can see a top 10 in your championship coming into this round. Stefan Roestjen looks like he's pretty much got it wrapped up. And in fact, he will because there's 35 points is the maximum you can take away from this round. But you look a little bit lower than that and it shows how close and how competitive the racing can sometimes be in this series for seasoned and serious racing veterans. Of course, all of our drivers over the age of 60 years and you can see Russ Addy in second there is 21 points clear of Bill Lawrence and then a little bit clear of Paul Stump who is one point ahead of John Morgan. And you can see the remainder of the numbers there. There's definitely plenty to fight for. Uh, for our drivers, uh, not just a bit of pride on the line as well. And you mentioned uh, this circuit on average, very high average speed around this lap, a lot of sweeping corners. And in a car like this with uh, a bunch of wings stuck on it that, that add a bunch of drag, it does mean that the slipstream, which is always moderate in this car, will be very strong indeed around this circuit, especially with the fixed setup, meaning everyone is running equal downforce levels. Yeah, certainly does, and it, it is one of those classic circuits, really, that you don't get to see that often nowadays. We'll go have a look, hopefully, well, Bob Kern's just coming up to end a lap here, but um, we'll see how we get on here. Of course, qualifying is going to be coming to an end very shortly. There's two and a half minutes remaining here. And uh, through turn one then, Bob absolutely flat out through turn one, down to fourth gear for this long sweeping left-hander. Important to get your run out of this corner absolutely spot on, because then you're going to carry that speed all the way towards this. Honda hairpin, tricky corner here to get right onto the brakes, so easy to lock up a wheel. Through the left, and uh, through the right, sorry, now into the left of Siberia. Get a late apex here, because you want to carry the speed on the exit of the corner. Through this left and right, going to be absolutely flat out. And then we come to one of the trickiest parts of the circuit here, David. Yep, exactly. You crest over the hill as the radius of the corner decreases as you're tightening your line and then you have to brake down, downhill into MG and the track then drops away towards the inside as well there. So easy to lock a brake and I think Bob Kern has pushed just a little bit too wide on the exit potentially. I think he's going to have to basically give up on this lap unfortunately. It just goes to show that uh, it's very fast and very sweeping, except for the two hairpins that we've got that look like they're going to be prime overtaking opportunities. You can't help but notice that there is plenty of downforce on this car when he keeps it absolutely pinned and can pick and choose his line through turn one here. Uh, I suspect cars will, in the race, be able to go side by side near flat out through there. Uh, this is going to be very, very close in race conditions, I think. It certainly is, and it's going to make some uh, really entertaining racing for us, which is what we always get here in the 50-plus racing adventures. And uh, we're seeing, well, a, a few different names here in your standings. We're getting ready to uh, get towards the end of the qualifying and the grid, but it's uh, crucial to say that uh, your champion then, Stefan Rosgen, up at the top of the leaderboard in second place, but Jean-Michel Noyon, 
on provisionally on pole position. It, the times are that close, it's broken our on screen graphics for showing you right now, but we'll be able to see, show you them in about six seconds time. These times just too hot to handle, and while we didn't see him in the top 10 of the championship standings, uh, Jean-Michel Jean Noyon has taken pole position here, and he won the round last time out in uh, round 11 as well. So uh, clearly a very formidable racer, but not one in the, the championship fight. So this is your starting grid. As we said, Jean-Michel Noyon on pole position, and then back behind him is going to be Stefan Rostin for our standing start. Russ Addy in third, Randy Schumacher in fourth. Fifth place, uh, familiar name in the series, Bill Lawrence. Always look for him to move up through the field. Paul Stump then is in sixth place. Seventh is John Morgan, and eighth is Donald Poole. Yeah, absolutely. Then the rest of your field, then uh, Bruce Poole, with Mark Robertson rounding out row number five. Row six is Bob Kern and Kenneth Baldwin. Row seven is Lyra Coppage with David Riley in 14. Joel Martin and Lewis Cannell rounded out the top 16. Further down, Richard Coulomb, Bruce Granheim for 17th and 18th, Richard Valley and Jared Florison, 19th and 20th. Wally Molesby is in 21st, and then Richard Ross in 22nd, Greg Garris in 23rd, Larry Thomas in 24th. Plenty of cars on the grid for the season finale here, because the 25th place is Fred McIntosh, Scott Gello in 26th, uh, Douglas Beasley in 27th, and Gene Moore in 28th. 29th is France Brink without a time, and uh, forgive me because I've misread, this definitely looks like a rolling start as they pull off the grid now behind the Porsche safety car, and it's a full tour of the circuit on the pace lap here at Phillip Island. Yep, so all the opportunity to get um, your tyres prepared and uh, the, the brakes prepared as well get some heat into the the brakes there because you do need that going into turn one but uh, as we mentioned Jean-Michel uh, Noyon great pole position time from him but uh, really close qualifying between him and Stefan Rosgen and the rest of the field to be honest I mean basically you're talking first down to 13th covered well first down to 14th should I say covered by a second in your grid so uh, it's going to be plenty of close action in this one David I'm looking forward to this but there are overtaken opportunities here but you've got to make the most of those opportunities yeah, one of the things that might make the time so close is just how much downforce looks like it's wound onto these cars. There's almost only two braking zones around the whole lap when turn one is flat out and they've clearly got so much grip through the long turn two of Southern Loop as well. It means the racing is, is going to be close. A lot of the moves surely are going to happen into those hairpins, but it's still a really brave move to try and set up an overtake into the uh, MG hairpin where we saw you know, you're uh, trying to slow down as you come into the tightening corner over the crest and then drop downhill. So uh, the racecraft is going to be very, very interesting to watch here, that's for sure. Certainly is. Let's see uh, the drivers uh, getting ready and uh, being prepared for this one. But this should be some great racing. As you say, two racers here. So uh, it should be an absolute cracker. No pit stops expected. Definitely no pit stops required for fuel. Uh, if drivers do pick up some damage that uh, requires them to get that repaired, they've got two fast repairs available to them. So we'll only see people jumping down onto pit road uh, if they've got damage that they feel is compromising their pace too much. What we'll see dropping down onto pit road is our safety car as they get ready to go racing. Two by two for the start, and that really looks like uh, Noyon has put the throttle down out of the final corner. The green flag waves now, and two by two, they all stream down towards the ocean, but they've got turn one and turn two to negotiate. Turn two is going to be the first braking zone. It's a long, long run down towards turn one and through there. Rostian is going to try to challenge for the lead, tries to go around the outside of turn one to give him the inside for turn two. Doesn't quite work, but they are all mostly clean through the start of the race. Only a couple of drivers grabbing some positions. 
Yeah, as uh, oh, we've got one car off, that's Jerry Florison. Do you know what? Every time we have one of these broadcasts, David, it seems to be that Jerry Florison gets involved in some type of uh, incident here. So uh, we'll see. I think he's pretty much done it on his own here through the centre. Yep, yeah, carry too much speed, and around the go. So easy to do. There's also a bit of a crest in the middle of that corner as well. And like we say, first lap, tyres prepared and the brakes prepared. And the track conditions might have changed a little bit since qualifying as well. Uh, not drastically from anything we see, but it always uh, can happen in that time between sessions that uh, the weather and the conditions can change a little bit. Noyon uh, still holding on to first place and suddenly looks like Roshan is under a little bit of pressure from Russ Addy who got a great run there. Doesn't look like anyone is going to be able to break away from this pack because all the way out of that uh, hairpin it looks like it's flat chat full throttle to about turn two. Such a long run of wide open throttle and slip streaming. Yeah this is going to be uh, what we get all the race through. The problem is Going into turn one, because they're pretty much on the throttle limit anyway, being in that draft was only going to pull you alongside halfway down that straight. When you get towards the end of the straight, you're just going to be sat there on, 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 the, on the limiter. So, yes, it's good to be in the slipstream here. It gives you opportunities. But down the pit straight, it won't help that much. John Morgan battling, by the way, with the 979 of Donald Poole. And that's over sixth place. Yep, so a couple of drivers have made a couple of moves here. Uh, Bill Lawrence has gone from fifth up into fourth because he passed Randy Shoemaker. And this one here, uh, John Morgan and Donald Poole, both of them are up one position because Paul Stump has dropped back two spots behind them. The top five starting to try and break away a little bit. What we see here is John Morgan in sixth place oh. and the little train that he's starting to leave now. Poole, Donald, uh, Poole off. Yeah, and it's, it, it's so easily done over the top of the crest. You mentioned it about how the corner comes up over a crest and then the back end just goes through him and there he is, passenger, through the gravel and the grass. But fortunately for him, nowhere near any of the barriers. Gosh, it looked a bit worrying for a second though in the onboard there. Yeah, it's just coming over the crest. The rear's gone away from him, but side by side for the oh! lead. Roshan around the outside, and there's contact. Both of them are going to go facing the wrong way. It's, uh, and uh, someone else tagged in there as well. Looks like Bill Lawrence. He had two cars facing the wrong way. Whichever way he's picked to go, he's picked the wrong one. Contact between first and second. This is a big instant, and they're both going into turn one. And they're both, well, Noyon just seemed to drift out wide a little bit. And the innocent party there, you have to say, is Bill Lawrence who ends up slamming into the side of Noyon there. And uh, there was a couple more cars went off in sympathy in that instant as well. Didn't catch who that was, but uh, yeah, a couple of big, big incidents there in that uh, one section of the race. David Riley and John Martin, they've headed on to pit road as well. Huge drama at the oh, front Bruce of the field. Means he was the leader. The yeah, he's, he's lost it in the same place as David Poole. It is looking so, so tough out there. So now your leader of the race is Randy Shoemaker. Russ Addy from third inherited the lead. And here we go, another driver just finding the rear of the car, stepping out over the crest here. And then gets on the grass. He goes for a, a beautiful pirouette, managed to catch it. No damage on the car that I can see. That is going to cost him the lead of the race because you can see a couple of these drivers coming on through. So now your top three, Randy Shoemaker, Stefan Roestgen, who might have a bit of damage on that car, and John Morgan in third. Uh, Russ Addy's dropped all the way back to sixth from the lead of the race. And you can see it's dropped you into a whole bunch of traffic here in the top ten. Lukey Heights is taking some big victims right here in this race already. We've seen two cars off there in, in two of your three, uh, three laps that have been completed so far. So really, this is um, survival of the fittest, it seems. I didn't expect to see this really, David. It's... Uh, it's certainly been a race of attrition so far. We've only got 23 cars that have not been on to pit road. Uh, Jean-Michel uh, Jean Noyon, David, Bill Lawrence, David Riley, Joel Martin, Larry Thomas and Richard, Ro uh, Richard Ross from the first lap. Those two have been on pit road as well. So that's what six cars all have had to take a trip. But the crucial thing is, 
the second race, they can still score some good points. Exactly, a rather unique points format in this championship where each round has two races and the points that you take in your championship is whichever of those was your best result. So you can go and win race one, lock in uh, 35 points, and then uh, in race two, you're only uh, racing to try and prevent someone else from taking those points. Here we go, a lot of side-by-side -side into turn one. Russ Addy's going to try and get one of those spots back, and in front of that, uh, I think Paul Stump got back by on John Morgan as well so two positions changing hands in two different battles through turn one and turn two for the lead Stefan Roestgen is going to look to put a move on Randy Shoemake into the hairpin for like the third time Stefan Roestgen two tires in the dirt Shoemake I think was a uh, defending rather robustly for that lead Roestgen in the end backs out of it there's only a little tweak to the front wing on that car for Randy Shoe. Uh, sorry, for Stefan Roestgen. Really would have thought he would have had more damage from that turn one incident. Yeah, he would have thought that, but uh, he seems to have got away lightly with that one. And uh, here we go through Lucky Heights once again, down into MG. It's a really steep descent downhill here, but it's great to see Randy Shoemaker able to uh, be up at the front of the field. It's not just the front wing actually, I've noticed on the side pod on the right hand side of the car a little bit of scuffing of the uh, of the car but it doesn't seem to be affected. Stefan Rosgen, he's here he comes now for your race lead. Yep, uses the slipstream and then pulls out. They remain side by side here towards turn one. And Roestgen has his nose just in front. He'll try and come back across to the left. Crowd Randy Shoemaker out of it. Roestgen looks like he's gone and taken the lead back. So great fight back from him. And behind there, we've got uh, Russ Addy, who is on a tear once again. Right up behind John Morgan. What can he do maybe into the Honda hairpin? From Stoner Corner they go. And to the right-hand side. Morgan makes a little bit of a defense. We'll try and hold on to that one. Has he gone in too deep, though? No, no, he's, he's okay. He's got the run out the corner. The thing is, if you do go too deep there, you can kind of hang it out there and get the inside for Siberia. So you don't end up losing to, uh, the position. You lose a bit of time through there as uh, through towards Lucky Heights again. I think everybody in the first two laps are just getting caught out by the lack of grip from these cars through Lukey Heights, but now everybody's up to temperature and got used to how the car feels, it seems to be running okay for everyone. It's that high speed balance through the fast corners, isn't it? Because you saw some drivers lose it in turn two. It just yeah. feels like at those super high speeds, the rear just gets a little bit twitchy and doesn't plant quite as you'd think. The lead of the race, Roshan is leading that center feed one side and the other, trying to make sure that Randy Shoemaker can't come back for the lead of the race. But it's not necessarily going to be successful because Shoemaker gets there, holds the inside for the next turn. A side-by-side -side through Southern Loop, they go for the lead of the race. Roston's trying to hold the momentum sort of outside line. Just might work out for him. Shoemaker is still there. Yeah, looking to the outside of Honda. Shoemaker, oh, great move by Shoemaker to make that one count. Russ Addy makes his way past John Morgan as well, and Paul Stump has caught up to your two race leaders. So these two battling has allowed these other cars here that was in this battle in further down to be able to just make their way closer and closer to the field, to the front. So your top six now covered by just 2.1 seconds. Yeah, exactly. A top six battling for the lead here. And Russ Addy, what a roller coaster of a race he's had. Uh, starting out of third, working his way up to the lead, dropping back to sixth or seventh, now back into fourth and working his way forward in this pack as well. And it's, uh, it's a bit of a game of musical chairs here because every time they come across the start finish line, uh, someone is sort of without a seat. Shoemaker, you see, is going to come under so much pressure from Roshan. And uh, if it's flat out through turn one, what he's doing is staying to the left to hold it around the outside, to then give him the inside for turn two, which is really the first braking zone. But it's not going to work because Roshan is back through into the lead once again. Paul Stump in third looks on. Maybe it'll be his turn soon. 
well. I mean, th that's it. But the, 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 the guys behind don't want to be fighting too hard, really, because they want to stay with your race leader. If you start squabbling between second and third place, for example, that allows Stefan to maybe try and make a breakaway and pull away. Jean-Michel Noyon, by the way, fastest lap of the race, has been in the pits. He's in a draft of Bill Lawrence further down. One lap down, uh, down the 23rd, but it's got the fastest lap of the race, at least. A little bit of consolation for the man who started on pole. Randy Shoemake back underneath the rear wing of Stefan Roosten. And this is the corner that's been catching everyone out across the top of the hill. Braking, turning, and the track descends, and all that just asks a bit too much of the rear tyres sometimes, it seems. Our top six navigate it safely this time. Got a little bit of lap traffic in front of them, and that might almost, at some point, provide some relief for Stefan Roosten if he can pick up the draft of someone else depends how he gets on past them though but you can see these six cars a real train as whichever way Stefan Roestrin goes Randy Shoemake follows and then Paul Stump follows that Shoemake looking to see what he can do this lap by Roestrin might hold on to it the uh, back and forth swapping game for first and second down the pit straight uh, bucks the trend at least once he has a uh, go around turn two head towards Honda once again and uh, well it's uh, Gene Moore who they're catching up to here at this point Moore running wide and deciding do you know what I'm getting out of all of their way and that's probably a very good idea right there because you don't want to end up tripping up over the leaders uh, because you don't want to be that person really if you're a bat marker you're they're not in your race, so you just let them by, try and tag onto the back of them and see maybe where you can pick up a few tips as to where you can gain a bit of time. Do you think letting the leaders through Moa could have taken to the grass? Uh, no, because you don't want to be unpredictable. You want to keep the car on the track uh, because then it's, it's predictable to a degree. If you end up going on the grass with these cars, hit one bump wrong and it can spear you back onto the, onto the track and you end up wiping out somebody so so no i think it was right to uh, stay on the track but just run it wide fair enough so stefan roshan is going to lead another lap randy shoemake behind and look at roshan sort of weaving it around a little bit turning in very early to turn one and taking some interesting lines shoemake is still there paul stump in third russ addy in fourth John Morgan and Bruce Poole holding on to this top six train that is now breaking further free from Bob Kern and Kenneth Baldwin in seventh and eighth. I think they've been battling each other just a little bit too hard when they needed to work together to stick with this train. Nonetheless, they're uh, going to be having their own battle. Our top six, though, this really looks like where the winner of the race is going to come from. Lap 10, we're going to be halfway at the end of this lap. And from the racing we've seen, I think it'll take something to separate this group. We've had an instant Greg Garris has been off, and it's going to be into turn one and two. And let's see. He's probably going to be losing control into two. That's the most likely. There you go. Locks up the rears, it looks like there. Oh, please don't hit the barrier. Oh, oh dear. Yeah, that car's not moving anywhere fast. And in fact, they've taken a tour back to the pits. And that's why they give the marshals that little tyre barrier there in their arm coat. So, yeah, unfortunate there for Greg Garris. I think that might have been on, on throttle. We've seen at all kinds of speed. Drivers can lose the rear of the car. Here's our top group. Oh. defending from Paul Stump. What, because happened what has happened to Randy Shoemaker? Yeah, he's dropped six seconds back off the lead of the race he's had Here some problems somewhere oh, on that lap out wide bit of grass goes for a spin that's penultimate uh, the corner. penultimate corner yeah yeah that, the pit entry it, it's so easy to do that as well so easy to just run a tire rear tire over the grass and before you know it you're, you're around you go he's coming under pressure from uh, the uh, from the others of Bob Kern and Kenneth Baldwin Stefan Rosgen now though has got a different task because he's going to try and keep ahead of Paul Stump and Russ Addy and we've seen how Russ Addy's race has gone so far but Stump starts six up into second now yeah indeed Stump sort of the the quiet assassin here we haven't seen him make too many moves on track what he has is avoided having as big of an issue as plenty of these other drivers have had 
He's nine tenths back from Roshan. I don't think Roshan's going to be able to break this slipstream uh, from here. So I imagine it's pretty powerful down the pit straight here. We look on board from the third place, Russ Addy. And he just has to follow in the wheel tracks of Paul Stump. And Stump has to follow in the wheel tracks of Roshan in front of him. That's what makes this a bit of a conga line. But it's now a five car conga line as we've lost one for the battle of the lead and for the race here. You'd see that we've lost some cars from our, our lead group, and that's why Stump is up four positions. Morgan up three, Paul up four, and Adi, Adi gets rather close to Paul Stump, and Stump did close in a bit on Stefan Roestrin, but maybe not enough. This might be the point where Russ Addy gets impatient. Russ Addy is going to look for a move here into Honda on the brakes. Seeing that he's done these moves before into here, and that's exactly what he's done there. Carry the speed, but this is this really should be where Stefan Rosjohn was trying to make the breakaway. He's eight tenths ahead of uh, his second place man now. He needs to make that breakaway and try and get it as that gap as much as possible because we're into the second half of the race here, and uh, well, he's not been able to break that draft so far. No, an eight tenths isn't going to be enough. He'll need to find somewhere over a second before uh, Russ Addy no longer continues to close him down on the pit straight. Here, Russ Addy needs to be clinical and precise because he can't afford to give away too much time through the middle of the lap lest he lose touch with Stefan Roestjen who was much quicker through MG who didn't lock up the gap for the lead. You can see there, 1.1 seconds. Russ Addy needs to absolutely follow in the wheel tracks of Stefan Roestjen the gap closing down a little bit. Russ Addy picks up a little bit of slipstream, but again, only enough to get it back to about eight tenths. If Roshan can have a good middle sector of the lap here, he's on for something. Someone in the wall, oh, Wally Molesby. Yeah, so we just caught him uh, parts upon the grass. We're going to stay on the replay once we've seen what's happened to Wally because Donald Poole's had an instant as well. Uh, so this is going to be on the exit of MG, and it's going to be on the power, or is it? Yes, it is. Just touches the... Oh, wow, that's a heavy hit. Nose first into that uh, that grass. And Donald Paul, oh, big incident there, in fact, between him and who was the other, uh, other car that he made contact with? I can't really see the car number, unfortunately. Yeah, so a couple of cars coming together in that section there, and we have them to, to come together so far off the circuit in the, the, the gravel trap, but live pictures at the lead of the race, Ross Addy doing a great job of not letting Stefan Roestjen get away. That gap down to six tenths now. So Addy's had a good run uh, through the middle sector, and now this is where he'll close up even more as they come through the final corner absolutely flat out in these cars in, the, in this setup to see how much this gap continues to pull down. It might be three tenths, two tenths as they come towards turn one and two. Addy, full half a second quicker that lap around. Now, Roshan is a uh, deer in the headlights here. Addy is right there. Roshan, two tires on the grass on turn in as well. Manages to hold on to it, but it is uh, no car lengths to separate first and second now. Oh, Lewis More contact now. deeper in the field. Oh. More contact. Yeah, that's a big incident for Lewis that will get a replay of this. Nice livery, by the way. Uh, as they come through. It's a classic. This is, it's, so it's going to be on M exit of MG. It's going to be the penultimate corner, I bet, here. So exit of MG gets wheels on the dirt. That curb unsettles a the car. They collect one car, collects them. And when they're trying to get out the way, oh, there's another car. And then they try and get out the way. And then another car comes in. Really hard look. I told you this has been a race of attrition. That's yet another car on pit road. Yeah, a lot went on there. The, the curb on the inside goes from kind of flat to, to raised. And he's hit that bump. You can kind of see it from the, right ang the correct angles. Everyone coming from behind just didn't know what on earth he was going to do. You know, tick one, tick two, tick three. Uh, is the fourth one free? I don't, I don't know, but that's unfortunate for a lot of drivers. We're now looking at only uh, 15 drivers that haven't been down onto the pit road to get repairs. And there's more walking wounded, like Stefan Roestjen, for example, who are just trying to nurse their damage to the end. Speaking of Roestjen, Russ Addy is still there. Poor Stump in third, putting the pressure on once again as well. 
Uh, John Morgan and Bruce Poole in fourth and fifth need to be careful they don't fight each other too hard lest they lose touch with the leaders. It's a serious possibility. Russ Addy, again, going to close in on Roshan down onto the hairpin here. And Addy has just looked so good on the breaks into the hairpins. Yeah, it, it, it just seems to be really suiting him uh, here for Russ. As, uh, you know, Stump's been keeping up with Russ Addy here, but on this lap, I think he's just maybe losing a little bit of a touch here because Addy, he's been faster than your leader over the last three laps. He's certainly got the opportunity here, but lap traffic, that's the 27 of Joel Martin ahead of Russ Jen, so that could help Russ Jen as long as they're quick through the final corner, or else it could hold up uh, Stefan and give Russ his best opportunity here. Yep, certainly anything that has the possibility to uh, be unpredictable benefits the driver behind, not the, the driver leading. So Roshan's going to follow as long as he can in the slipstream. There's a couple of cars, a bit of traffic to deal with. Look at that, just bouncing off the limiter for Russ Addy in sixth gear. Roshan looks to the inside of two to get on through, and Addy wants to drop in there as well. He's cleanly through. Paul Stump now a second and a half back off the lead. It hasn't favoured him well at all, and John Morgan might almost lose touch with him from a, a great train for the lead of the race that we had. It's starting to splinter just a little bit. It really looks like it could be a Rose, Rustin and Addy race. How good has Rustin, uh, not Rustin, well, how good has Rustin been all season? But how good has Rustin been today, though? Apart from that one mistake at Lukey Heights, to be able to then fight back and be in with a, with a shout of of getting the uh, the victory here in race one. It's been a great display by him. He'll be disappointed with that one mistake, don't get me wrong, but uh, as you mentioned, been so good on the brakes here. Yeah, and Addy's got the fastest lap of the race as well, so when he's good, he's, uh, he's pretty damn quick. Yeah, I mean, we always see, every time we show these races, and of course we, we only see, you can see uh, three of the, uh, the rounds of the championship, uh, you know, every time we get to see these see, these races, they always something always seems to happen to Russ. And well, this is a great opportunity for him around the outside of one. They'll give him the inside for two. He's going to do it, you know. They get close, but they don't touch. And Russ Addy is through into the lead. Roast and pushes out very wide, nearly gets two tyres out on the grass. So Russ Addy now in the lead, just about. Four laps to go for these guys. It's getting towards the crunch time, and these top two have definitely dropped the drivers behind of Stump, Morgan, and Poole. Again, the following car is the one that looks like it's better under the brakes. Roastian did a great job through the hairpin now uh, into Siberia. Morgan has gone ahead of Paul Stump then into uh, Honda Corner. So that's a change of position. We'll have a quick look back at that one then. So it's a mistake by Stump by the looks of things. Runs it out wide and slow on corner exit. And, well, Morgan just got straight through. That's how bizarre is that? But we'll go back to your race leader. And it's around again. Heartbreak there for Russ Addy. Facing the wrong way. Is it the same mistake over Lukey Heights? Just pushing too hard to try and hold on to the lead. Really looks like that's what it was. Turns in over the crest where the rear of the car gets light. And indeed, that's what happens. He locks up all of the tyres there to try and not spin it around, but it's cost him a bit too much time. Stefan Roestchen now has the lead of the race, and he's four seconds clear of everyone else. Oh, dear. Uh, John Morgan going wide there as well, but with three wide now. Stump to the inside, Addy through the middle, and Addy jumps back up into second once so again. To Bruce Paul to the inside of Paul Stump. We saw Morgan off the track briefly, uh, somewhere. Yeah, so, so so Morgan's had a bit of an issue because he was up to third uh, before that happened to Rosad. Look at Rosad, he's already pulled away from these two, Boot Pool and uh, Stump. Great to see Bruce Pool up there as well. Um, this is a this is a real race for those who, uh, who seem to like the track and who can survive this track because there's only been 15 drivers who have not visited Pit Road in this race here so far today. We've got enough of a race to go yet as well. 
It's not Belle Isle, it's not the Nordschleifer, it's not any of those circuits, but it's proved very, very difficult to, to have a clean race here. Uh, I mean, for example, Road America was a, a lot cleaner from my memory. I don't know, maybe just the, the way the setup is just isn't quite planted enough at the rear in the super high speed corners. I think it's that transition up over the the crest at Lukey Heights, which has certainly caught out uh, Rosati a couple of times in this race. Uh, but as you mentioned as well, turn two, people have had issues through there as well. So uh, yeah, maybe there's something in the setup, or well, I don't know. We'll have to we'll have to ask the drivers when they uh, when they come and speak to us after the race. Yeah, indeed. So Stefan Rostian leads by almost five seconds ahead of this particular battle here where Russ Addy is leading Bruce Poole and Paul Stump and you see that it really uh, just means no mistakes on these final two laps for Stefan Rostian and he could take what is undoubtedly not his first win of this season he's basically already locked in as the season champion uh, no one can grab more than 35 points so no one can can catch him to my knowledge yeah, this battle over second place, absolutely not decided. We've seen Addy is quick, but uh, not mistake prone, but not invincible. And Poole and Stump behind, and John Morgan even closing in on the picture as well. So a four-car battle for second place is an absolute possibility. Addy locks up a tiny bit into MG, but uh, Bruce Poole, who we're riding on board with, also wasn't flawless through there either. Yeah, absolutely. We're coming up towards the, uh, the start of the final lap here as well. For Stefan Rose, and he goes across the timing line now, so it's going to be one final lap here for the drivers. And really, if you want to make a move, you want to make it a turn one, nothing coming on for second through to fifth here, so uh, that one's going to stay pretty much as it is as a go through, too. But uh, yeah, what a what a drama filled first race it's been here so far. And, uh, well, we've got another race coming up uh, in a short while as well. We've got a little bit of a wait, actually, after this race, before the second race happens. And you will be able to see all of that happen live here on Racebot TV. But, David, I mean, apart from that incident at Turn 1, it's been a pretty much flawless race for Stefan Rostrum. Yeah, indeed. You could argue that that wasn't entirely his fault either. When he's been in traffic, he's kept his head clean, kept his head clear, driven clean is what I mean to say there. So, yeah, I mean, well, well deserved. He always has a great feel for this car. That's why he's a multiple time champion, multiple time race winner through the last braking zone of the course. Flawless line through there. We'll open the throttle and no one will be able to catch him. Stefan Roschen has one last corner to navigate and you'll see the chequered flag on race one of this round of 60 plus racing adventures. Stefan Roestgen is going to be our winner. So a good race for him. Look behind Addy, Poole, Stump, Morgan. What order are they going to cross the line? No one can catch Addy there and no one got a good enough run off the final corner. A couple more battles though. Yeah, it's Franz Brink and Donald Poole and to Brink. Started 20th, is up to 10th. Donald Poole will be a little bit disappointed with this after starting 8th. He's given it everything he's got here towards the end and uh, going to try and put the pressure on here through the final corner. Try and get the slingshot in the slipstream. Can he do it? Well, it's going to be close as this one as they're coming up towards the line. Who's going to get that 11th take place across the line? Oh, it's only just by one thousandth of a second going to be Franz Brink. So Brink just holds on there from that charge from Don Poole, who I think just stayed out of the slipstream a bit too long. Yeah, it was possible, but what a fantastic finish. Yeah, great, as Jared Florison and Fred McIntosh as well, really cl close across the line there. So uh, just waiting on one more driver to finish, and then we'll be uh, all set to give you your race results. It's going to be Gene Moa who comes across the line. So yeah, David, let's, uh, let's take you through the race results then here. Like we saw, your winner in race one today is Stefan Roestgen. Five seconds clear of Russ Addy, who... Well, hopefully you've learned a lot from this race because he takes the fastest lap of the race 
but second place ahead of Bruce Poole in third, Paul Stump in fourth, John Morgan finishes in fifth, and then the next group of cars is Randy Shoemaker in sixth, who led Bob Kern and Kenneth Baldwin in eighth there, and then Bruce Granheim in ninth, and France Brink in tenth. Yeah, one thousandth of a second behind Franz Brink is Donald Poole, then with Richard Varley. Then that close one that we saw just across the line as well, Fred McIntosh and Jared Flores. And only 14 cars finished on the lead lap there. And then the rest of your order then, Leroy Coppage, Bill Lawrence, Matt Robertson, Jean-Michel Nayon, the man who was on pole position, led early on, Douglas Beasley and Richard Coulomb. And then down we go even more. Wally Molesby, Lewis Cannell, who is have a massive shunt there at the penultimate corner. Joel Martin, Richard Ross, David Riley, Jim Moa, Larry Thomas, and drivers who did not finish, Scott Geller and Greg Garris, who uh, finished up in 28th and 29th places. But uh, this track here, we'll look at the layout there. It looks nice and simple, David, but uh, it's uh, taking some uh, prison, taking those prisons here. Yeah, exactly. I mean, just the, the high speeds, the, the very, very strong draft, and some of that swooping elevation change uh, on the island has really caught out quite a few of the drivers. And uh, in the end, it's Stefan Roschen who just holds on and makes no mistakes of his own and a great recovery drive from him to win this race. Yeah, absolutely, uh, absolutely uh, spot on. Great drive from Stefan, as we mentioned. That little incident at turn one with uh, Jean-Michel Neon um, is the only real sort of downside to uh, this race, but uh, surely you'll be happy with that, David. Exactly, and joining us now, hopefully, we have Stefan Roschen. Are you there? Yes, hello. First of all, congratulations on your win here, and I think congratulations on the championship as well. Yes, thanks. Tell us about that bit of contact in turn one. Uh, obviously, you recovered from that to still grab the win, but how did you see that uh, around the outside of turn one with Noyon? Well, as far as I uh, saw it, I think I, hold, I, I held my line, and um, I think Jean lost it a little bit and came, came into my line, and so we collided, and I was lucky to able to use the race really looked like you could have picked up more damage from that but uh, didn't seem to lose too much pace and tell us about your your battle with with russ addy unfortunately he went for a little bit of a spin and, and couldn't keep battling with you but looked like he had a lot of speed yes yes russ is very fast and uh, you know philip island is a very extreme raft track so and drive away and um, yes us was was hard to fight and uh, had the opportunity to pass me and he took the opportunity and um, yes it was luck for me that uh, run on the hill and that looked like a corner that was catching a lot of people out is it just you know, uh, high speed coming over the hill there and the rear of the car gets loose. How do you avoid making that mistake? Because we saw maybe a dozen people uh, almost throw their race away in that corner. Well, well I've made this mistake thousands of times. Um, um, about not overdriving the car when you go over, modulate the throttle. You have, to know, you have to learn how much gas you can give at which point of the corner and uh, I try not to overcook it and most important thing is to break early enough for the hairpin on the bottom so that you can uh, take enough speed on the Well once again congratulations on the win here it makes it look like a pretty dominant championship uh, win for you in this season of 60 plus racing adventures has it has it felt that easy or is it just uh, all fall into place at the right time for you this season oh, difficult to say um it was what it was um yes it, it did not feel too stressful from but um it's it's always a little bit of luck oh and now in the middle of 
of this season. New York has joined us and he has uh, pretty much the same pace like, like I have and we will have a very interesting next season. I well, thank you so much. And uh, Paul Smith, I think, has some words. No, I was I was just going to uh, ask Stefan if he wanted to uh, to to thank anybody whilst he was here on the broadcast before we let him go. Yeah, I think we have a, a fantastic league. The guys are all very fair drivers, and all are committed and real 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 fun to to drive with these guys. And we have. Uh, Admins who do a fantastic job, and I would like to thank them for that. And also, the race sport co uh, coverage is, is very, very excellent. Well, thank you very much, Stefan, and uh, all the best for race number two. Thank you. See, so that was uh, Stefan Rosjan then. And what we could do is we can have a word with the man who finished on third place as well, Bruce Paul. Bruce, how are you uh, How are you doing here today? Uh, howdy. Uh, boy, I don't know how I got here today, to tell you the truth. This was uh, quite a race. Well, I what? just tried to stay in the toe of the guys in front of me, and next thing I looked down, I was in third place. Well, that's it. You know, you qualified in ninth, but this track it's a it's a really demanding, challenging track, and we found that a lot of the drivers were getting involved in either their own mistakes or getting caught up in other incidents. But you've managed to keep your uh, your nose clean and get a good podium here. Yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, I try not to push it too too hard, but. Uh... The, the guys in front of me towed me uh, towed me along, and I was watching the guys behind. Uh, Leroy at one point, uh, I think Russ passed me a couple of times, and he ended up second, I believe. It, it was quite an exciting race. Yeah, it certainly was uh, exciting. But of course, we have uh, we have been racing all season. This is the season finale. How do you feel that your season has gone here? Usually for me, if I make the top ten, I'm I'm uh, a little bit satisfied. If I happen to get closer to fifth, I'm I'm very happy. And uh, so this is a real treat. This one, uh, yeah, the season has gone quite well actually. Whenever I've had a bad race, I've usually come through and had a half decent one in the second race. Well, that's it. We go on to the to the second and final race of this season. Uh, you know, gloves off, give it everything. Uh, can I get that question again? I didn't quite hear you. <laughs> I was just saying it's it's the final race of the uh, of the season the, in uh, just a few moments' time. Is it time for gloves off and see what happens in this one? Oh yeah, I think so. Uh, they they never no two ever go the same, but we'll uh, we'll certainly give it a try. Well, seeing as we've got you here in the commentary booth and we don't get to speak to you uh, as often as we'd like, Bruce, uh, is there anyone you want to give a, a quick mention to whilst you're here? Oh, the guys that run this league, they have it's top-notch. We've got 25-plus guys every every week, and uh, it's a pleasure to race with these guys. You guys, because I can send the replay off to my grandkids and they can see that what I'm still doing, so... Uh, yeah, that's great. Thanks to you guys, you put on a, a great show. Well, well, thank you very much, Bruce, and I uh, wish you all the best in the, the final race of the season. Thank you very much. Take care. There we go, David. Um, nice to see you from Bruce Paul, our uh, third-place finisher. Yeah, indeed. A uh, good run from him, as you said, up quite a few positions. So great to have a word with him. And of course, he sounds like he's going to be racing in that second race of this round that is uh, a couple of minutes away. We do hope you stick around and join us for that one. We're going to go on a quick break and we'll be back with coverage of race two of this Phillip Island round of 60 plus racing adventures on Race Spot TV.
this is Jim Beaver, voice of the Lucas Oil Off-Road Racing Series. Introducing Pro 2 and Pro 4 trucks on iRacing. Game on! The most realistic online racing sim ever made. This is iRacing. Detailed laser scan tracks. Fully dynamic, real world cars, and over 50 series to choose from. Six online world championships offering over $400,000 in annual prizes. This is the original esport racing game. This is iRacing. Simulated racing can be awesome, but it can also be kind of a free-for-all. Interestingly, auto racing faced the same problem in its earlier days. 
Whether it was on the back roads, the beaches, or the city streets, the racing was always fun. But there was always a certain level of chaos or danger until some folks came along and put some order to all of this. Stuff like official racetracks, regulations about weight and equipment, and enforcement of standards. That's what gave us high-speed excitement, fast-paced action, and photo finishes. That's when racing became racing. The guys over at iRacing.com have made the same transformation in the world of sim racing. See, iRacing analyzes the performance and results of each driver in every race. So you can be sure you're always placed in races where the competition will be tight and that those reckless drivers who ruin it for us all will be kept in the pits. Not to mention that with members in over 130 countries already in their vast community, you can find races day and night, so you can always get in the action. You can even join a league of your favorite series and work your way up to one of seven world championships offering over half a million dollars in prize money. And since updates are always automatic, you don't have to worry about software and can focus on the track. Zip up your fire suit and check out iRacing.com. Growing up as a kid in Oklahoma, where I'm from, the Chili Bowl is the biggest race that we have. The Chili Bowl has kind of been my favorite race of the year. Growing up a dirt racer in Oklahoma, that's kind of the Holy Grail.
Welcome back to Phillip Island for race two of 60 plus racing adventures, the season finale from Phillip Island. But before that race, it's qualifying. Qualifying is underway right now. All of the drivers leaving the pit lane and ready to start their flying laps to set the grid for race two. Remembering that they use a two race drop format in this series, the points that the drivers take away will be whichever was their best result between race one and two. We saw lots of drivers come unstuck in race one. We'll be looking for redemption in race two. One of them, this man on screen, Jean-Michel Noyon, who started from pole, but ended up finishing more than a lap down after contact with eventual winner, Stefan Roschen. He's coming through the final corner and he's gonna start another He's going to start his first qualifying lap. Can he put it on pole again? Possibly. Can he then execute a clean 20 lap race after that? That's the big question. So riding on board through turn one in sixth gear, flat out and towards the long left-hand southern loop. Another corner that caught some drivers out. As the track drops away in the middle. Some drivers lost grip at the rear and went for a spin through that corner. These Pro Mazda cars Quite quick indeed, but rather aerodynamically dependent. So sometimes when that comes undone, we've seen drivers make plenty of mistakes. Deep on the brakes into the Honda hairpin. And he, this lap is looking reasonable so far for Jean-Michel Noyon. First time on the board is Kenneth Baldwin. 1 minute 31.270. Puts him provisionally at the top of the times there. But I think he might be one of those drivers with a uh, pit stall that is uh, on the early side of the timing line. But I'm David Haynes and joining us once again and also in the producer's chair is Paul Smith for race two. Yeah, certainly we've seen the sexy times coming in for Noyon then. As now Stefan Rosjet, 24.9. That's a target for everyone there right now across the line. What will be Randy Schumacher pretty close 25 0 here for Nyon? One more lap, of course, they get two laps, two flying laps in qualifying here. Just 10 minutes to set those lap times, so uh, not a lot of time to uh, go ahead and get yourself a qualifying uh, position here in the race. And of course, it is the season finale. It's uh, one that these drivers uh, will be uh, really pushing to get. A really good finish to the season. You want to finish the season on a high, don't you, David? And uh, well, here's one man who uh, who was pushing and made maybe pushed a little bit too hard in that first race. Yeah, Russ Addy led a couple of laps, but in the end, didn't take the win in race one. He's going to come across for his first flying lap here. How is it looking? Where will it put him? 25.7. It's going to put him only in ninth. So he's going to hope that on this second lap, he can improve a little bit higher. Again, there was a couple of drivers who, you know, qualified just around 10th place or so and managed to steer clear of any incidents, keep their nose clean and move up through the grid. 20 laps is plenty of time to grab a couple of positions, especially if some of your opponents are going to come undone. Stefan Roosten just goes even improves quicker. Improves about two tenths. Yeah, he's uh, absolutely on one. He is now on. What can he do? He's currently third because Randy Shoemaker has gone provisionally on pole position, and it's uh, not going to be an improvement here for Nayon. Bill Lawrence now comes across the line into fourth place. A lot times are starting to come in here now. As Russ Addy, he's coming towards the end of the lap there, but uh, Shoemaker, Randy Shoemaker, Stefan Rosjen's not going to be on pole position once again here at Phillip Island. Yeah, everything's bigger in Texas, and that was a big lap from Randy Shoemaker to go about a half a tenth quicker than Stefan Rosjen put himself on pole. Uh, amazing time there. Going to look for Russ Addy. It's the pool of drivers who can displace Randy Shoemaker for pole position is ever, ever dwindling. Addy's now, time is now only good enough for 13th, and he's going to hope to improve at least somewhat. It does no. into 7th. Yeah. Seventh. yeah, 7th. Seventh. Not the best lap from Russ. He'll now just carry on turning laps, trying to uh, get a feel for the car and the settings uh, and the uh, the conditions here. I'm just having a look. A bit cooler. 
Yeah, a little bit cooler, but um, we'll have a look at the conditions uh, momentarily once we see Randy Shoemake. Is, oh, in fact, no, he won't because he's on lap threes. He's just putting in laps right now. Bob Kern is somebody who hasn't set a lap time yet. Uh, and he's somebody we didn't really see in that first race at all. And uh, the team Morgan driver will be hoping for a better second race here. Yeah, indeed, we, we see him often uh, in this series. Uh, race one just was not quite for him, uh, it seems. See the sector times there, so he's on a, a flying lap here. And uh, drivers have plenty of time to put in their laps. Most of the drivers leave the pit lane right at the start of the session. You can be a Bob Kern if you want and put it off just a little bit later. So we'll see what his first flying time looks like. Wide open throttle towards the line and see there a 26.1 moves him up into 17th still plenty of room to improve here for Bob Kern and luckily for him he still does have another lap in his pocket to uh, put together everything he learnt on that one go hell for leather on this he's got a banker lap down well that's it that's exactly what you said right there he's got a banker lap in and he'll be going just to try and get that one final time but I mean everyone else who can possibly uh, challenge for pole position, I would say, have set their lap time, so we'll keep an eye on Bob here as he goes round into Siberia. And uh, yep, that really is the name of the corner through the left hander. And uh, you, you were mentioning earlier, David, I mentioned about how good, uh, how much I, uh, I love this track. And uh, what was it you asked me uh, why I like the track so much? Well, I, I used to live relatively nearby in the general region and the the things i think about for phillip island is one this racetrack but two there's a big penguin colony not a colony of big penguins they're <laughs> tiny little penguins but there is a lot of them so if that's your kind of deal you absolutely got to go uh visit the, the the penguin observation colony thing yeah so uh no i don't like it for the penguins but although i would like to see the penguins now that you mention them across the line goes bob by the way uh does improve his time up into 13th, so uh, an improvement there for Bob towards the end of qualifying. Everybody else has pretty much set their lap times here, so we've got a minute and a half to fill here, David, but um, I, I will say, uh, and, I, and I say this every time we're on one of these broadcasts, it's so great is the is the action in the series. It's uh, it always produces great racing, and uh, these drivers are really respectful of each other. And yeah, there can be mistakes happen, but you never hear you never see sort of like the big drama, say in the in-game text chat or anything like that. It's just a yep, sorry, I got it wrong there, and everyone moves on. It's it's a breath of fresh air, and it's fantastic. I think if you're too angry all the time, you don't you don't make it to sixty. Your your, <laughs> your little your little heart won't won't take it, or, or someone else will uh, <laughs> take you for, for for something wrong. So there's only two drivers, three drivers that haven't completed all of their two laps, and they're in the pit lane and not going to be able to improve as it stands right now. We had 29 drivers for race one. Looks like we can have 28 for race two. So. Uh, all the drivers really keen for that opportunity to improve on their result from race one or uh, solidify their position. I mentioned the track about, air temperature about the same, but the track temperature about two degrees cooler than last race. Not a huge difference. And that yellow pen uh, that Paul Smith has got is going to show you what I'm talking about there. Still partly cloudy similar time of day so not a lot of change from race one but there might be just a tiny bit more grip yeah I, I, it's not really uh, changed that much these drivers are going to be pretty similar but the opening opening laps here of course again rolling start are going to be crucial and uh, we saw how one mistake can cost you a race lead in this race and uh, well will we see that again here very shortly as we uh, can now take you through your starting grid for race two. Yep, indeed, a little bit of a shock, but on pole position by half a tenth of a second, Randy Shoemaker ahead of our crowned season champion, Stefan Roestgen, starting out of third place and uh, with a lot of unfinished business, Jon Michel Noyon and then Bill Lawrence in fourth place. Good starting position for him. 
in the first section of the grid. Don Poole in fifth. John Morgan in sixth. Russ Addy going to start out of seventh place, but that's not going to preclude him from maybe making some good moves through this race and being in podium contention once again. Eighth place, Leroy Coppage. And ninth, Bruce Poole. Tenth, Paul Stump. Eleventh, Kenneth Baldwin. And twelfth is Joel Martin. That's it then for Bob Kern in the Team Morgan with his teammate Matt Robertson in 14th. 15th for Jared Florison and Lewis Kennell who will be helping for a better race uh, this time around. It starts in 16th place with Bruce Granheim and Richard Farley 17th and 18th. As you can see the drivers pulling away under this pace lap. It's Greg Garris and David Riley rounded out the uh, row at number 10. Row number 11 is Fred McIntosh with Richard Coulon in 22nd. 23rd from Wally Molesby and Larry Thomas in 24th. 25th with Gene Moore with Ronald McManus 26th. Douglas Beasley and Dean Heck round out your 28th card red. Yeah, but only one driver there, Dean Heck, without a time. I can't tell if he is a taken the start or not but regardless we still have a pretty strong grid a lot of familiar names uh, with uh, experience racing around each other and racing this car so we are set for probably another action-packed 20 laps of Phillip Island there you see two drivers who collided racing for the lead in race one Stefan Rostian and John michel Noyon that's Shoemate they, uh, that we see on screen, sorry. Shoemate, yeah, apologies. He's got the Texas kind of flag on his car, and it looks very similar to the French flag as well. So, yeah, right behind there as well, you see John michel Noyon. But Randy Shoemate on pole position with Stefan Roestgen for company, and then right behind the point I guess I was trying to make is uh, can John michel Noyon fight hard, but keep it clean in this race because it looked really promising in race one it just kind of came unstuck taking too wide of a line through turn one contact and a lot of damage to the Frenchman I've just got to quickly point out before we get to the start here it was a very early on to the power for Noyon in that last race interesting to see how Shoemake takes the start here in this final race of the championship the Porsche safety car going around and uh, well as I mentioned to uh, to uh, Bruce Poole time for the gloves off it's the final race of the championship guys let's uh, let's give us a show yeah exactly send this season off with a bang with some excitement and on a high note so all back up behind Randy Shoemake pace car into the lane when will he jump he's definitely packing the front rows of the grid up he waits he still waits his decision and we're gonna get all of the grid onto the pit straight green flag waves and Shoemaker hasn't made much of a jump at all he still gets the power down just a little bit earlier than Stefan Roestgen in second two by two they'll all stream down towards turn one and hopefully keep it clean well this is it this is the uh, the crucial point of the race right now in towards turn two the southern loop everybody behaving themselves so far keeping it all clean we've got side by side action further down but everybody's still racing here in the early going yeah not a lot of changes in our top five this is the lead Noyon having oh. a look at Roestgen. Someone's feared off the track. That looks like it might be John Morgan, who uh, has he been helped or has he missed his braking point there? He's gone well off the circuit. A couple of other cars on the grass as well. Here's the replay. John Morgan mostly minding his own business. Got uh, Poole and Addy behind him. Lap one, he breaks a lot earlier than the drivers behind. We, and we're they stay give a him a bit of attack. We are going to stay on replay because... Oh, I've just lost him now. Kenneth Baldwin has been involved in an incident, and I believe Stump was involved there. Stump's lost control. Around goes Baldwin. So that's a big incident, and we're still going to stay on replay here because Donald Poole has had an incident as well. This is going to be coming through Lukey Heights. Don't say it's onto the grass. It is. Oh, that car. Oh, he's a passenger there in that one. Into the tyre barrier. Heavy damage. 
That's going to be Paul out of this race, but Shoemaker Rosgen for the lead. Yep, for the lead, Rosgen around the outside of turn one to the inside of turn two. You think that might be job done. Noyon and Bill Lawrence look on. It's been issues for Russ Addy. He's at the back of the field, pitted for damage. So this top four now, a bit of a slimmer breakaway than we saw last round. Noyon is going to have a look at Shoemake now that Roastian is already through. It's not going to work around the outside of the hairpin though. And Bill Lawrence keeping in touch with these guys as well. It's a bit of carnage continues around the field looking for Gene Moore. What has happened to him through turn two might be a bit predictable. Oh, the car in front is slow and uh, Moore has to take evasive action because there was another car on the grass so a lot going on there and I think we might see that's Ross Addy in the background we're looking sorry no that's Larry Thomas different orange car yeah so Larry Thomas has had his own issue here into Siberia back end loses control around it goes into the gravel but does carry on in this one. Lewis Canal was another one who's had an incident in this one. You see Stump is coming out of the pits as your leaders are coming down pit road. But uh, I tell you what, rostrin has got a little bit of a gap to the lead. And Noyon is right up with Shoemake. And uh, Lawrence is not that far behind either. Yeah, the pressure definitely on Randy Shoemake from behind as well as he tries to stick with Stefan Roestchen for the lead. Race 1 was a bit of a form guide for Race 2 because uh, it, it continues to, the, this combination of car and circuit to catch out a lot of drivers, a lot of, uh, a lot of mistakes, and especially the first couple of laps, drivers uh, co uh, confidently putting a little bit too much into the car, asking for too much and uh, stepping out here, there, and, and, and everywhere. We've seen it, Siberia, Lukey Heights, turn two, all sorts of places. Second place man gonna take a different line through the corner that caught him out a couple of times last race, potentially. Pushes a bit wide through MG Hairpin though, and, and that's gonna, gonna cost his exit that I think is so critical for this pit straight. The pressure's on him now. I, I tell you what, I think the pressure might be getting too at Randy here as well because uh, he's lost ground on Stefan Rosgen and uh, Nyon is all over the back of the uh, gearbox. And here he comes then to the right. If I'm Shoemaker, I don't fight this too hard. Sit in the slipstream and Nyon. Try and pull yourselves back towards the leader because if you fight too hard, guys, you're going to end up losing the draft here and Stefan Rosgen's just going to walk away at the front. Yeah, it's definitely a consideration for these guys at the moment. Shoemaker's uh, still safe within about six tenths of Rosgen, but Noyon's looking for the inside into the next breaking zone. Is he going to be able to make a move there? No, I don't think so. I think the most sensible uh, guy here is Bill Lawrence, who's just watching these two guys in front and uh, not taking any risk, just riding along with them. He's still within two seconds of the lead. You can see this lead pack. Oh, we've had further instant, further down. Wally Molesby is one of those drivers involved. Fred McIntosh as well. It's into Honda. Oh, they were going three wide. I mean, that's... <laughs> That's asking for trouble. Oh, McIntosh just gets into the back of Molesby. He goes across the inside, uh, outside of the corner. Uh, McIntosh ended up across the inside of the corner. Uh, and that is those two back up and running, but with damage. And look at the lead now. It's a second. Yeah, Roshan doing everything he can to try and break away from those pursuing cars. And Shoemake maybe has his elbows out just a little bit too far this early. Maybe, as you suggest, he might be better off to just let Noyon take this for the moment. That gap for the lead, though, came down a little bit down the pit straight. Shoemake not out of the draft just yet, but it's definitely a, a risk, something he needs to think about. Um, um, when you're this early on in a slipstreaming race, you don't want to fight tooth and nail for every, you know, for every single position. You're going to have that sort of peloton effect if, you, if you've got a bunch of cars at the front of the field. You might as well sit in behind the slipstream of Nyon. If, he, if, if he's got the pace here, which he certainly has got, 
then why not let him just take that uh, lead role against Rose Jen and pull pull you forward here because there's plenty of time. There's three quarters of the race left here, so uh, plenty can happen in this one, as we saw from race one. Yeah, look at that gap that Rose Jen has got now, and there's three cars then stacked together. Shoemaker now the cork in the bottle. So you get a good run off that hairpin. I think he did, and that's so critical because he's just at the point we might lose touch with the lead of the race. Got that live updating gap for you to see that Shoemaker still just within the slipstream of the leader. Roshan is so close to trying to break away from it. And you know what? In fourth place there, Bill Lawrence has just grabbed the fastest lap of the race. Yeah, double, double draft. Sat behind, gets himself uh, a couple of tenths faster than Roshan and up in uh, the fastest lap. So he's giving it everything, is Bill. And why not? And I tell you what, the uh, Stefan Rosgen at the front, I think he's going to make the breakaway. Nyon needs to make this count. He needs to make the move. He needs to make it stick as well, forcing the car wide almost onto the, uh, onto the dirt. And again, they're fighting each other tooth and nail. They're allowing Stefan Rosgen to just pull away here as Noyon now, still side by side. I'm hearing tyre smoke, tyre ahead. Oh, how can I hear tyre smoke? But I hear the tyre squeal in the head with a back marker having issues at Lukey Heights. But finally, Noyon has made it through, but now 1.3 seconds behind your race leader. Yeah, Shumek put up an interesting display there, but I, I think you point out not necessarily the smartest way to go about it because Roshan now has the biggest gap he's had all race maybe Noyon can use this back marker to help him close a little bit of the gap to Roshan see the live updating gap there it might come just underneath one second out as they cross the start finish line Roshan all the way to the right hand side of the track for as long as possible to try and not give too much assistance to the pursuing Noyon, but again, it's uh, not quite gonna work out. Shoemake and Lawrence just need to follow along now. Behind them, in fifth place though, battle between Poole and Coppage. Yeah, Coppage of course got caught up in the instant in race one, so he's trying to get a salvage of the result here in this second race. As you mentioned earlier, David, a unique uh, points uh, table here. The best result from the two races of each week go towards your championship so Leroy will be wanting to get a good result here and right now in sixth place chasing down Bruce Poole uh, Coppage started in eighth but did lose that position this lap to Bruce Poole who started in ninth yep Poole pretty big mover from ninth on the grid up into fifth same of the, the drivers battling behind them Bob Kern and Jared Florison who are each up a big handful of positions and you see that there a big mover right now Richard Coulomb in 10th who, who started in 22nd is now inside the top 10 so all the spins all the contact we've seen uh, there's plenty of positions to be picked up if you can just uh, be a little bit cautious the battle for the lead though uh, Noyon has just put in the fastest lap of the race five tenths quicker than anyone else and close this gap down from a second at the start finish line the previous time around to suddenly being about two tenths the pressure is going to be on Stefan Roestgen very very soon the question is is Noyon dragging Shoemaker and Lawrence into the picture as well very deep on the brakes and the gap for the lead might as well be nothing yeah absolutely uh, we've got problem for Florison yeah I was just about to mention that it's in turn two and what then he's on his own a little bit too much speed perhaps yep back end breaks away and as soon as it hits the grass you're a passenger you could save some bandwidth and just uh show a previous replay for that one he's not the first driver to do that and with 12 laps to go i want to suggest he might not be the last but what is uh not a replay of what we've seen before is this battle for the lead. We're also not hoping for a replay of contact between these two battling for the lead of the race. Yeah, let's uh, let's not have a repeat of race one here, guys. As, uh, here comes Nyon then. We've seen how feisty Nyon is out there on track. 
with the battle with Randy Shoemake into turn one. This time Noyon's around the outside and uh, Stefan holding that inside line. And Noyon got a nose there, but not quite far enough alongside to make it count into two. But as you mentioned, this is dragging Randy Shoemake and Bill Lawrence along for the ride. Yeah, it certainly is. Less than a second to separate our top four here. Noyon very, very close. Is he going to have a move? Roshan's going to defend the inside. Noyon might have to go around the outside of this hairpin. And if, if uh, Roshan gave Noyon the treatment that Noyon gave Shoemaker, he would have squeezed him all the way out there. But they stay side by side through Siberia. This time, Roshan on the outside. And... A lot of side by side here. Who is going to get their nose in front? This time they come across Lukey Heights, which is going to be a difficult place. And Shoemaker wants to get a, a part of this action as well. Roshan out wide, but that gives him the inside for the next corner. He'll hold on to the lead for the moment, but he has got his elbows out. He's already bagged uh, 35 points and the championship from the win in race one. This is all. Uh, this is all for pride. This is all for fun. I think Roschen, you know, is definitely in a position where either he uh, he wins this race or he loses nothing from throwing it away. Well, here we go. Nyon then with the speed, with the overspeed from the slipstream around the outside of one. Oh, there's a squeeze there from Nyon on the apex. And here comes Schumach then trying to make the move on Roschen here down the inside of turn two and Nayon's already making a breakaway here at the front Shoemake and uh, Rosgen still side by side as they're headed in towards the hairpin onto the brakes here can they make it work and uh, Shoemake around the outside can he hold it here you've got the inside for Siberia we saw how uh, Nyon and Rosgen went side by side last lap. Now Shoemaker makes it through. But all of that has allowed Nyon to pull out already into an eight tenths of a second lead. Yeah, indeed. Noyon's not quite going to get away with it, but Shoemaker was not going to give up on that pass either. A couple of corners it took him to get it done. In the end, he seizes the opportunity. The top four stay the same drivers but they switch order someone's off the track there um, and that's not necessarily a surprise so now down the pit straight Noyon is going to need to uh, do whatever he can to hold on to the lead but Shoemaker needs to follow those wheel tracks of the car in front the gap about seven tenths he is not out of the picture yet whatsoever he needs to not worry about Roshan behind just worry about that driver in front but he, he pulls out of the slipstream too early to try and defend from from Roshan I, I wonder at some point this might start costing Randy Shoemaker he's not driving for the big picture but he is uh, he is driving at, in an entertaining fashion yeah, he's certainly given us a display, that's for sure. But uh, we've gone past the halfway point of this race. Rosgen, excellent on the brakes, it must be said, compared to Schumacher as they come through Honda in towards Siberia. And uh, again, it's, it's. I don't like to see too much defensive driving. Uh, because if you defend too hard, you end up costing yourself and the person that you're fighting time and really at this point in the race, still at this point in the race, it's too early to be giving it absolutely everything. Oh, Florison's had enough her off. That's at the hairpin this time at Honda. As uh, we'll have a look, quick look at the replay, see what happened there for Jared. Uh, because uh, it's not been Jared's race, let's be honest. Oh, we got onto the grass. So that corner definitely not playing nice with Jared Florison this particular race unfortunately up the front though a little bit more traffic as there's been all throughout this race Noyon gets through easily Shoemaker is he going to get blocked out a little bit he's still trying to defend from Roshan and Bill Lawrence in fourth place uh, might be the smartest of the lot here he's still uh, within touching distance of this lead pack and with the 28 drivers and quite a few drivers having some problems there is no shortage of, of lap traffic that these guys need to make their way through. It's going to compromise oh, the line for the pursuing no. cars. He spins. Oh, contact between Lawrence and Roshan. And Roshan's the, the pointing the wrong way, going to lose the most time. Lapped car 
Uh, went for a bit of a spin there. Almost looks like a Stuart Grand Prix livery. Rosgen's out. Just flat out out of the race. And it's car number nine. And, uh, oh, Beasley just locks the rears up. And that costs Rosgen. Oh, huge damage to Rosgen. Oh, yeah, you can see that that wasn't moving again. We'll have a look from on board Rosgen then. Just very quickly. This is your champion, of course. Into the hairpin. Beasley's trying his best to stay out of the way and just locks up the rears. That catches out Rosgen and then gets absolutely ploughed from behind by Lawrence. That's one of the disadvantages of, uh, of Lawrence being there at the back of that pack. What this has meant now is it's just a two-horse race at the front between Shoemake and Nayan. Lawrence has carried on in third place, but Leroy Coppage now is five and a half seconds behind, but is in fourth place now. Just goes to show anything can happen, and Shoemaker has a bit of a look at Noyon uh, unconventionally, I'd say, into turn two there. Now that it is just the two of these guys, they can... It might benefit that style of Shoemaker where he's, he's trying to make a move here, there, and everywhere uh, without consideration for that bigger picture. But when there's only two of them, the picture's not quite so big anymore, so maybe this will shoot, suit Shoemaker's si style. That was not a tongue twister. Uh, well, it was for you, as uh, they go in towards Lukey Heights once again, and uh, Shoemaker, as you mentioned, he could focus in front now, could concentrate on that leader, leader here, doesn't have any distractions at all, and could focus on hitting the marks, and I think that's what was a little bit of an issue for, uh, for Randy earlier on, having that pressure from behind constant was just maybe making a few mistakes, making him miss a few apexes here, but now can focus solely on the car in front. And uh, really, these two, they could put on one heck of a display towards the end of the race here. Certainly could. I wonder what the damage is like for Bill Lawrence in third there. His first flying lap since that incident, he drops about six tenths to the guys in front, so he might just try and hold on to third place. Actually, looks okay, does this car, surprisingly. That is, yeah, that is quite the surprise, actually. Yeah, um, <laughs> it, it, yeah, it, he's got away very lucky with that indeed. But, of course, dropping off the back of that pack now means that he's uh, three seconds behind those two. He's got no draft, and this is showing what the draft costs you here in this track. It's interesting to see that Nyon, actually, in that last lap, was the about half a half a tenth faster than Shoemaker. So even though he's the leader and is creating the draft for Shoemaker, he was faster on that last lap. Yeah, both of them had some troubles through the uh, heights and the braking zone down into MG here, taking radically different lines, and neither of them quite got to the apex. Uh, their battle isn't the only battle on the circuit, though, as we see poor, poor Jared Florison. Uh, he's gonna hope that for the remainder of the race we've got no more reasons to put him on a replay but here is one of them for maybe the third time the rear just gets away from him over the crest of southern loop it takes him a while but that uh, he's facing the wrong way again unfortunate for Gerard Florison and he's discovered there that going up on the inside of that corner sends you up a bit of a hill now I'm gonna keep it on replay here because Greg Garris we've not really mentioned him that much in this race and I'm gonna give you a reason why we're gonna mention him now this is coming through Lukey Heights and once again Lukey Heights catches its latest victim off goes Garris but is in 10th place at the moment did well to hold that one and get going again Yes, not a car particularly well suited for rally crossing. Greg Garris holds on in 10th place. Unfortunately, that separated what was a, an interesting little three-car battle in the, the mid-pack of this yeah. race. The uh, drafting battles that we're used to seeing, have, we've, we've lost some of them, except for the lead of the race here, where the gap is uh, really not too much. Randy Shoemaker still staying in the picture. Both of them taking a wide line oh. across the top of the hill. Shoemaker! Too tight towards the apex, a bit of a slide, catches it, that's lost him, big handful of time, he's now two seconds off the lead, does he have the pace in clean air to close that back in we've, the remainder of the race? We've also had an incident from Wally Malsby as well, and I suspect this is going to be turn two 
getting its latest victim. Around it goes. Oh, I don't like rolling it back onto the racing line, but uh, we've got away with that one as the 43 as well. Matt Robertson was sort of spun in sympathy, really, but able to keep going. And now they're in this battle. Now, Russ Addy, you look at this. Russ Addy is back into 16th place after being in the pits. Put the pressure on Matt Robertson, and we saw avoiding that spinning wall in Allsbury. And they've got Jared Florison as well. So, three drivers who have been involved in incidents all together here for 15th, 16th, and 17th. Yep, two drivers in this pack that have uh, been down through the pit lane, unfortunately. And of course, everyone started with enough fuel to make the full race distance. So, you've uh, made a trip to your pit stall, it's because you had just too much damage on the car. Russ Addy is going to try and get his way past Mark Robertson and it's going to be pretty easy because he has the overspeed, he pulls across right into the slipstream of Wally Molesby so that helps Addy carry his speed through into 15th place and then next maybe try and size up Wally Molesby. A little later apex for Russ Addy, he'll hope to get the throttle open early as he can. Wally Molesby is going to back up this pack just a little bit side by side. Addy and Molesby. Addy has his nose in front. Molly Molesby is dropping back through the pack a little bit. Mark Robertson's going to try and go around the outside of the hairpin, but that won't quite work out. Molesby's uh, got a little bit of rear, rain, rear wing damage, so uh, that'll be affecting his top speed and his grip. But look at Russ, Russ Addy already just pulling away then in that one. He'll be a little bit frustrated that he's not involved in, uh, in the battle up at the front. Meanwhile, John Morgan, with a massive damage on the rear of his car, is battling David Riley for 12 for 13. So now David Riley putting the pressure on. Yep, indeed, Morgan, another driver with a bit of damage. And that rear wing is no good at all for, for John Morgan. You can see the speed difference makes it easy for David Riley, who is not carrying all that extra drag. Unfortunately, Morgan looks like he's just going to continue dropping down the field a little bit because that rear wing is not doing him many favours at all. Look, a little bit of a teammates battle here, Joel Martin and Richard Coulomb. Martin deep on the brakes around the outside, but manages to make it work. These guys battling over 8th and 9th, and Richard Coulomb still, despite losing that spot there, our biggest mover because he's in ninth now after starting in 22nd. So, good run from these guys. Great effort, you can see it on the left-hand side there. 14 positions gained for Richard, so fantastic effort. That hasn't that was, updated. Yeah, that hasn't updated on this lap. It only updates at the start of the lap. So that'll be up 13 positions, and uh, Martin will only be up a, a meager four positions. So, uh, um, Joel is actually pulling away here from his teammates. So obviously the two teammates working together and deciding, you know what? You're the faster one, Joel. John, you go... Uh, Joel, sorry. You go through. Yeah, they've got to be careful. Greg Garris might close in on them. And he's just set his personal best lap of the race. He's definitely on track to do that. This battle, David Riley, John Morgan, Russ Addy. Addy in pursuit of more positions after his first lap incident. And he's just gone and set his personal best lap of the race as well. So a lot of these guys getting their confidence, getting their mojo and, and picking up a lot of slipstream as well. Morgan, that rear wing we've talked about already. Addy very wisely setting up a later apex to try and get the run off the corner, try and get his way past John Morgan, but there just wasn't quite room to go three wide there with uh, Beasley. But he'll try and go around the outside into the hairpin. He'll try and go two for one, but it won't quite work out. That corner, too tight, really, to be able to go around the outside there. Russ Addy will have to wait a little bit longer, but he can still see maybe 12th place in front of him. He's running out of time, though. We're on lap 19, uh, at least your leader is. And uh, Russ, oh, he's going to try the inside. Lukey Heights, that's not normally an overtaking spot. And again, Russ Addy at Lukey Heights. We saw it in race one. Oh, dear. 
I, I, I tell you what, he must have a, a, put a hex on, on that corner uh, because he's just not had any joy with that one whatsoever. We'll have a look at it on board. You kind of felt that coming though, uh, trying to go too wide through there, really uh, compromises his line, tightens it on the inside. And then, you know, the, uh, how early did that rear snap when he was trying to go too wide through there? Fortunately, he just kept it off of the tyre barrier, but maybe he needed to be a little bit more patient making that move. Well, you can see that time's running out, and unfortunately that's dropped him uh, a few positions here. That's dropped him behind uh, Molesby and Robertson. And oh, he's having enough for spin! Now, that what happens with your tyres is that when you start sliding and spinning, you build, put a lot of heat through them, and you lose a lot of grip in the rear end, and that is what Russ is suffering with right now as Wally Molesby loses position to Mark Robertson and your race leader Jean-Michel Nayon is on the final lap. Yeah Randy Shoemaker's fought very hard to try and keep up with him but that gap now is extended from about two seconds out to three seconds over the last couple of laps so Noyon just needs no mistakes on this last trip around the circuit to be able to grab that win that he uh, he really wanted in race one but couldn't quite get. Here's this teammate's battle again though. Martin, Coulomb and behind them, Greg Garris trying to close in. Martin passed Coulomb earlier. Now Richard Coulomb might want that position back. Behind them though, Greg Garris took another second out of them on that lap. He's really closing in on the final lap of the race. There's only a couple more corners for this man. Jean-Michel Noyon who's one last time out in Barcelona He's looking to go back to back wins here didn't win race one but he'll still grab 35 points for winning race two out the final corner towards the checkered flag others faltered he stood strong and he is the winner of the last race in 60 plus racing adventures for this season fantastic display from Jean-Michel there to be able to uh, to keep the pressure on. We'll look back though, because Greg Garris is putting the pressure on uh, Richard Coulomb towards the end of the race here. Can he make any move? We've seen how you could get really close across the line. Will we see enough of a photo finish across the line? A little bit compromised through the penultimate corner as Garris. Now through this final corner, he wants to be right up behind the gearbox of the car in front, and it's just not close enough, I don't feel. So it's going to be staying as they are across the line, but uh, what a performance, uh, and what a teammate battle it was between Martin and Coulomb and how they uh, all panned out. Wally Molesby, by the way, has had an incident on this final lap of the race, and uh, that car battered and bruised. It's just going to make his way past lap traffic there, but uh, it's been a race to forget for Wally Molesby. But uh, he'll come through down in what will be 17th position. And they're the last of your lead lap runners here, David. So, uh, well, as, uh, as he goes across the line, we can uh, to give you your final race results. So, yep, after heartbreak in race one, comes back stronger for race two. Jean-Michel Noyon, a winner once again in 60 plus racing adventures. Randy Shoemake couldn't keep with him. And Bill Lawrence gets third after heavy contact with Stefan Roestjen. Lawrence somehow coming off relatively unscathed. Fourth place, a quiet run up four spots for Leroy Coppage into fourth place there. Bruce Poole in fifth, Bob Kern in sixth, Bruce Granheim. Another quiet race we didn't speak much about in 7th place. Joel Martin and Richard Coulomb battle between the teammates there. Martin comes off victorious, but Richard Coulomb still the biggest mover in the field. Up 13 spots from his starting position. Greg Garris, a decent job to finish in the top 10 as well. Yeah, Fred McIntosh then. Really good result to finish off to say that he was involved in an incident early on. David Riley's teammate finishing five seconds behind in 12th place. John Morgan then with a major damage to his rear wing in that uh, 13th place. 14th for Mark Robertson ahead 
of Ronald McManus and Wally Moresby, the last of the drivers on the lead lap in 16th place. Russ Eddick with Kenneth Baldwin, Lewis Kennel and Douglas Beasley and the top 20 with Richard Valley as well. Dean Heck, Jared Florison did not finish, neither did Gene Moore. Stefan Rose, Jim, we saw that major incident with the lap traffic down at Honda Hairpin. Donald Poole, Larry Thomas and Paul Stump, the last of your runners here in the final week of this season of 60 Plus Racing Adventures. It's certainly been an enjoyable season uh, for what we... Um, what we've been uh, been able to cover here on Racebot TV, and I believe we've got uh, we've got the chance to have a word with a couple of drivers from that race. Uh, over to you, David. Yeah, indeed, what a great uh, season we've seen. Racebot brought you first round. We brought you a uh, week seven. Now we bring you the the what's not the championship decider, but was the final round. We'll speak to a man who could have won this race, Randy Shoemake. But where do you think? Your challenge for the lead came undone. At the bottom of the uh, the last right-hander, I got the tires locked up at one point, and uh, that put me back, one, I think, a couple of seconds, and I just couldn't make that up. Well, still, you stand on the podium, and what a lap to get pole position uh, for this race. How do you approach the two-lap qualifying to uh and where was the secret to that one lap pace i have to thank uh matt cook and andrew aiken in the uh, classic indycar series we practiced probably 20 25 hours on this track for that race and it just got me prepared for this one and uh allowed me to get ready and and know where we could uh you know we've got more downforce and traction we have less downforce we have less speed on this car so I was able to push it harder and uh, just all that previous practice is what paid off today. Well you've still got to be pretty happy with second place in the last race of the season. Anyone you would like to thank? I want to thank my wife for all the support she gives me. I want to shout out to uh, Tony Lamberti He's always supported me and uh, is watching today. Mom and dad are watching today. So uh, those people just express, give their love and support for me all the time. And, and I certainly appreciate it. Thank you so much for making the time to speak to us. And hopefully uh, we'll get to chat with you again in the next season. Thank you, David. I appreciate it. Everyone have a great holiday. Yeah, indeed. There we go. Paul Smith was pointing out to me that today or tomorrow or yeah tomorrow uh thanksgiving in the u.s and everywhere else that celebrates that so uh, shout out to those people and one more person who's going to have a word with us our third place finisher is with paul smith well and bill uh, it's good to to speak to you as always here in the uh, the country booth and uh, you've had an eventful eventful evenings racing here today Thanks, Paul. Good to see you and David again. Yeah, was quite eventful. That first race was a little bad luck there, but second race I got some good luck on the on a spin. Well, this is it because you you started in fourth place and you were you were sat behind the rest of them. Were you, were you deliberately just thinking I won't battle these people in front? I'll just sit behind, let them sort themselves out, and then maybe pick off any uh, any incidents. Or was that just your pace here today? Well, I was sitting behind uh, intentionally near the start, but that uh, sitting behind failed when uh, I think it was Stefan spun, and there must have been a little time lapse there because I seemed to go right through him instead of ruining my race, but that dropped me well back, uh, so I couldn't start to charge near the final laps, but that was a goal. Sit back, take your time, and hopefully something opens up at the end. Well, that's it. It's, it's very much a uh, a thinking driver's uh, track as this one because of the draft is so strong here. And uh, we saw how you were losing maybe six, seven tenths of a second after that uh, incident that dropped you back compared to the two race leaders. Yeah, that's right. And they were on on top of each other. So they started to even gap that some more just because they were playing the draft nicely. 
So, yeah, I was on my own out there after that. Uh, well, of course, you know, this is the final round of the championship for this season. Just talk us through your season. How's it gone for you this season, Bill? Yeah, I've been pretty happy with the season, really. I missed a few races, so... Uh, the ones I've been in, by and large, have been, well, I think every one has been a lot of fun. I mean, most of it's been good luck, but some bad luck. And I always count on you guys to bring me some good luck here. So thanks for that today. Well, absolutely. And that sort of leads me into my final question, which is, as always, Bill, who do you like to uh, to thank whilst you're here? Well, I'd like to thank Joel Martin. He's the head admin for our league. Mark Leeson, who helps him out and sponsors some races along with John Morgan. Uh, Bruce Poole for his pitchers. Uh, my teammates, uh, Ken Doomer, who's not here. He's on vacation somewhere on an island. Oh, that's so, lovely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very nice. Uh, but as always, pleasure to speak to you, Bill. And, uh, well, we'll look forward to speaking to you again in the future. Thank you, guys, and, and the final thank you to you for all your coverage. Much appreciated. It's always a pleasure. Anyway, all the best, Bill. So there we go. Bill Lawrence then uh, in third place. Unfortunately, we won't be able to speak to our race, lead, uh, race winner in the end here, but uh, David, I enjoyed that race, and Philip Island always produces great action. Yeah, no doubt. Beautiful surroundings and two action-packed races. Plenty of times for you to fire up that replay button and uh, click click that one because we had plenty of action to look at. Some great battles, some great races. And for this season of 60 Plus Racing Adventures, while this final race didn't go his way, Stefan Roschen is your champion once again, putting together an obviously very solid season to win uh, quite uh, significantly more than a race clear ahead of his rivals that wraps up 60 plus racing adventures for this season but no doubt it's not the last you're going to hear about this series their new season i believe starting in two weeks and if we're lucky here at race spot we'll be covering that one for you once again so thank you so much to everyone who makes our broadcast possible of 60 Plus Racing Adventures. It's Van Voloff, Track Camps 22, and Paul Smith behind those cameras today. I've been David Haynes. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you again soon on Race Spot TV.